I'm going to show you some of the features of a long named application which I think might you might find really useful. It's called Remote Numpad and Keypad Pro. Well, I'm just going to shorten to Numpad because it's quite a mouthful. But be careful when you're looking for it on the App Store as there are several other applications called Numpad there which are not this one. The great thing about Numpad is that it offers you a keyboard interface on your iOS device, your iPad or your iPhone. And those keyboards can then be used to activate shortcuts for any of the programs that are on your Mac, including Ecamm. And I use this quite extensively with all of my Ecamm recordings, except for now because I'm going to be showing you it as a base software. This is just a, a quick introduction, so I hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. So you'll want to know where to find it on your iOS device. So if you go into the App Store, you'll see an application that looks like this, Remote Numpad and Keypad Pro. That's the one, so it's that icon. You'll see that the UK price is here. I believe that in the US it's around about four and certainly less than five dollars and that's a one-off charge so it looks like an incredibly useful valuable asset and is really never going to break the bank. This is a great idea to use if you can't justify getting a stream deck for instance but you still want to get that kind of keyboard functionality. It doesn't exactly match the Stream Deck's functions, but even a Stream Deck user might find that this has some features which are complementary to that piece of kit. If I just scroll down the interface here, you'll see that it supports a number of applications and has a particular set of user requirements. So please have a look at those before you download so that you can make sure that you're up to date with everything that's required. In order to run Numpad on your computers, you'll need to download a remote helper app. And I'll show you that right now as we show you the interface on my iPad. So this is the Numpad interface. What it shows is both of my Apple Macs that I've got the helper app running on at the moment. Now I could have any number of Macs with the helper app and it will actually work with any of them. You simply select which Mac you want to send the keyboard commands to. But firstly we're going to go into the little cogwheel, the preferences button, just to show you what's there. So the first option there is download helper app for Mac. If I tap on that it then brings up an address where you can download the software for the helper app. There are a number of other options here which I'll let you go and discover as you work through the application itself. I'm now going to switch to the Remote for Mac helper application on my Mac. So the helper app appears along the top of your Apple computer interface. It has this icon and there are several preferences and permissions that you can set. There's also an interesting section that says show QR code and the QR code relates to the Macs that are on your network. This enables you to very quickly show the QR code, so I'll do that now. So it shows the QR code and in the application itself you can take a photo of this QR code and it will automatically link directly to the numpad application, making setup incredibly easy. And the permissions setting allows you to tell numpad what you want the device to actually control for you, but very easy to set up. Now that we've done that, I'm going to move over to the iPad interface. You've got a picture here of my real iPad, the one that's actually showing you the picture in the background. So I'm going to just close this settings interface. You'll see at the bottom there's the scan QR code. If I touched that it would open up the camera and you'd photograph the QR code that appears on your Mac screen. 
that then easily links you to any of the Macs that you have the helper app on. I can then select that I want the iMac and what we see first is the default number pad. So this is there on every numpad installation as a default setting. It's great because if you've got a keyboard like this one, we know that we don't have any numbers in this kind of format. So it makes it very easy to be able to use that keyboard and is a wonderful uh, extension to the keyboard functionality. If you want to see that working, I'll just quickly switch over to a text edit window. So I can now tap any number on the numpad application and you'll see it come up in the text information. So I'll do one, two, three, and you see it comes up. There's no delay whatever. Uh, there you go. And delete works and space, etc. So that shows you that the transfer is very easy. Although I have a cable connection here, it's just really providing me power and the ability to show this on the screen. Numpad works completely by Wi-Fi. So I could unplug this and the Wi-Fi functionality links me to any Mac that I select. If I want to go back, I can press the top left hand arrow and select a different Mac in order to make my inputs. Let's go back to my iMac. So the interface has two standard screens. We have the number pad for typing any numbers into the Mac that you require. The next one along, which is there by default, is a simple interface showing some basic button commands. Again, they're fantastic if you only have a basic keyboard that doesn't have those functions or you just want to have them on a separate device. So I'll now take you through the methodology of adding a new keyboard. It's very easy. So in the top right hand side of the interface on your iPad, there's three dots. Touch that. The second option down, it says create keypad. So we'll touch that. On the create keypad option, you'll now see a whole host of pluses. And these are areas where you can now select and put a little key there. What we do is we simply touch the plus button. This opens up a keyboard which allows us to add in any functionality using any of the keys available on this keyboard. So it's a fully featured keyboard. To keep things simple, I'm going to program it to be a copy button. So it's command C. What you'll also notice on this is that there is a timer button on the far right hand side alongside the command C. If I touch that, this brings up a millisecond delay timer. So I can enter any number of milliseconds delay after my command and it will then process a subsequent command on the same key. This is incredibly useful, for instance, to automatically launch an application and then wait for a certain amount of time and then process the next subsequent command. However, all I'm going to do now is touch the done button and we see command C is a button that's appeared on the screen. If I want to make this a little bit more customized, I touch the key and I can change the action, which is the command C, if I wanted to reset it for something else. I can change the title, so I'll touch the title button. I'll just delete what's there now and enter copy and say OK. If I now click on the next button to it, I can do command V, which we all know is paste, done, title, paste. OK, so I've got a very simple copy and paste functionality on these two keys. Let me just show you the copy button one more time. I can enter an icon if I want to, and there's a whole host of icons, too many to show you. And also there is a color functionality, so we can assign any color we like under the custom button. I'm going to assign a, a standard one here, which is the blue. 
I can do the same with the paste button. If I assign a different color to that, let's make that yellow. And once I'm complete, I can simply hit the done button. I now go to the far right hand side because that's where it's stored my next keyboard. And here we see the copy and paste functionality. If I now jump over to the text edit window, I've got a line here that you can see. And if you look in the inset, if I touch the copy button because I've highlighted the text copy on my normal keyboard, I will just move the cursor, go a return and just simply hit the paste. And you can see if I hit paste, it simply very quickly pastes what I've copied. So that's a quick demonstration of how easy it is to create a key. Going back to the keyboard, I can still edit this keypad. I touch the three dots and hit edit. And I select the new one. I can rename that new one. Obviously you see the others there, but I'll select it just here. And this brings me back to my plus icons. What I can then do is add additional key positions. Use the plus button here. And if I add a column to the left and another column to the left and another column to the left and another and maybe one to the right, you can see here that we're very quickly able to build up. And here we've got something like 54 keyboard positions. If I want to move a key position, I simply touch it, copy, and then I select the position I want to put it in and then press the paste button at the bottom of the keyboard. I'll do the same. I'll just hit the done and then I'll select the paste, copy, select the new position and paste. Then what I can do is I can select the old copy and press the bin button to delete it. And I can do the same with the original paste key. So you see how easy it is to move those keys around the keyboard. Once I'm happy, I press the done button at the top right. I hit the done button on the top left. I then hit the last done button. And now I have my copy and paste keyboard set up, but with 54 additional positions that I can apply. I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. If you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments and please don't forget to subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the near future.